Live from Hazard, Kentucky, this is Jam and John's Wrestling News. Here's your news for Wednesday, November 14th, 2018. Nia Jax issued her first public comments about injuring Becky Lynch. Now, Nia Jax issued her first public comments on Twitter. She posted a photo of her fist with a cut around her knuckle, and underneath the photo she wrote, Hey, we don't deliver mail. Things happen. Is anyone going to ask me about how my fist feels? Becky Lynch was quick to respond to Nia Jax's first public comments by saying, You gave me your best sucker punch, but I got back up to destroy your whole roster. They won't let me fight, but I'll get back up from that too. It's what I do. So enjoy your one free shot, because as bad as my memory is now, I haven't forgotten you, which. Of course, Becky Lynch didn't say which. I gotta keep it PG here. And on the topic of Nia Jax and Becky Lynch, former WWE star Ryback decided to give his thoughts on the matter. Ryback directed comments towards Brian Alvarez of 4FWOnline.com, who was openly critical of Nia. Ryback fired back at Brian Alvarez's tweet from yesterday by saying, Shut the F up. Who the hell are you to make a statement like that? You're an effing mark, and your crap opinion is the reason a lot of people spew hate onto wrestlers. You're a wussy, though we didn't actually say wussy, replace the W with a P and you get the idea, who can't do it, so you criticize those who can. Mistakes happen. Your parents understand that. And after Ryback fired back critically at Brian Alvarez, a lot of fans decided to attack Ryback. Brian Decker tweeted, Not her first mistake, though. She has injured Bailey and Sasha twice. Zelina Vega is out because of her. Now Becky. What makes it really bad for Nia is this was a hot match that had to be changed. Nia screwed up big time, so I think the least she should be fined or something. And Ryback fired back by saying, Or maybe it's a blessing and just save Becky from a loss she didn't need. There is always a positive in every situation. Let the company handle it and don't speculate on outside reports. Cody Albert tweeted to Ryback, Uh, she literally cold cocked Becky in the face, like there's a solid second and a half that she reeled back and blasted her. I'm not one saying we should come for her head, but damn, I don't know how that wasn't intentional. Ryback fired back by saying I'm not defending anyone. I'm making a point to say, let the company handle it as they will have all the facts and don't direct hate at someone like that. Those guys do that a lot if they don't like people, they word things in a way to direct hate their way. At John Life 29 tweeted to Ryback, All you gotta do is search Jax's name here and on Instagram to see you're 100% right. The hate is crazy already. Ryback responded back to John Life 29 by saying, All wrestlers get this kind of hate. They can't say anything most times, and it's understandable. I, on the other hand, do what I want when I want and answer to only me. It's unacceptable to spew hate like that at professionals, professionals whom have actually made it. And Ryan Cole tweeted to Ryback, an unsafe performer trying to take the high ground on this situation, 2018 everyone. Ryback fired back by saying, I would love to powerbomb you into a pit of spikes. I would forgive myself afterwards for my actions. And staying on the topic of Becky Lynch and Nia Jax, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com, who broke the story about Becky Lynch being pulled from Survivor Series, addressed if there was backstage heat on Nia Jax for injuring Becky. Sapp also commented on the footage of Nia injuring Becky being shown on SmackDown Live. Yesterday, Sean Ross Sapp wrote on Twitter, Becky got stiff by Nia while Jax was fighting off Lynch and Naomi. Becky Lynch got checked out backstage, but I haven't heard anything resembling a diagnosis. Was treated as a that sucks, crap happened situation through the curtain. Becky was appreciated for keeping it going. Note to anyone retweeting this today, the that sucks, crap happens mentality changed pretty quick. Kristen Ashley tweeted to Sean Ross Sapp, If Sapp's sources are right here, that means that broken nose is more than a broke nose. Try to keep the nigh is careless stuff away from me though. If this is true, it will break so many hearts, including my own. I hope they're wrong, and she's alright. Sean Ross Sapp responded back to Kristen by saying, Nia is careless is the attitude backstage right now. Ashley White tweeted to Sean Ross Sapp, I was surprised they showed it, were you? And Sean Ross Sapp said, Nah, they're mad at her. At least the SmackDown crew is. Stay tuned to Jammin' John's Wrestling News for any further breaking news updates on this story. 
Dave Meltzer of 4 fwonline.com discussed Daniel Bryan's heel turn on SmackDown Live last night. Here is what Meltzer said courtesy of ringsidenews.com. So it is a complicated story, but Daniel Bryan himself has been pushing the idea of going heel just because his booking as a babyface with The Miz was counterproductive. It's amazing to me that he came back in March and here we are in November and obviously he made this choice some time back. Not a long time back, but weeks back that he had to go heel. Dave Meltzer continued on by saying, So that was Daniel's call. Well, in the end, it was Vince's call. So that was something that he wanted to do that had not been approved. Meltzer also commented on WWE deciding to do a WWE championship change and the heel turn on the same night to make the biggest impact possible. Dave Meltzer said, The Hill term was decided yesterday afternoon. It was basically Vince saying, Let's do it all in one day and get the biggest impact. Now the weird part is they've spent how much time saying that Brock Lesnar is the ultimate heel. He never comes to work, blah, blah, blah. Now you're going to put Daniel Bryan against Lesnar, and for that match to work, Daniel Bryan needs to be a babyface. But he's a heel. So logically, perhaps the heel turn should be in a rematch and not this match. Brian goes into this match as a babyface, do the match, whatever they're going to do. Also, Dave Meltzer commented on a planned match between Daniel Bryan and The Miz for the TLC pay-per-view being changed due to Brian's heel turn. Dave Meltzer said, The Miz and Daniel Bryan were scheduled for their blow-off in San Jose at TLC. I figure that's out the window now. So I figured they got to do a gimmick match between AJ and Daniel Bryan for San Jose. AJ Styles was scheduled to team with Charlotte Flair against The Miz and Asuka on this week's Mixed Match Challenge. The WWE pulled Styles from the match to sell him being attacked by Daniel Bryan at the end of SmackDown Live last night. Jeff Hardy ended up replacing Styles with him and Charlotte emerging victorious. And finally here on Jamin John's Wrestling News, it appears that the original plan was for Shawn Michaels to come out of retirement and do multiple matches, but the crown jewel criticism reportedly caused plans to be reconsidered. On the Oh You Didn't Know podcast, reporter Brad Shepard discussed the reaction to the Shawn Michaels match at WWE Crown Jewel. Brad Shepard said, I was talking with a source in WWE about the Shawn Michaels situation. Obviously, he had a total disaster of a match at Crown Jewel. It looked like mid-2000s TNA stuff. So what I'm told now is more than likely he will wrestle again still. Brad Shepard continued on by saying, The plan, to begin with, was multiple matches, but after that disaster of a performance that changed things, but what I'm told is more likely than you're not going to get HBK versus an AJ Styles or Daniel, or kind of a nostalgia match like an Undertaker again. So he is going to wrestle at least once more, maybe more, but he will wrestle once more. But it's going to be one of those two scenarios. Thanks to ringsidenews.com for the quote. And that is your news for Wednesday, November 14th, 2018. Happy Reclamation Day. Go out and get Fallout 76. Cannot wait to play that game next month. Should be incredible. Check back here tomorrow for another Jamin' John's Wrestling News Flash Briefing on Amazon Alexa devices. Big shout out to everybody listening to this on YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Stewie Family is the name. Follow me on Twitter at John Caldwell, J-O-N-C-O-L-W-E-L-L. Follow me on Instagram, the Jamin' John. If you'd like to sponsor Jamin' John's Wrestling News or your wrestling promotion wanting to get your next big event out through the awesome power of Amazon Alexa, you can email me, jzcowell at gmail.com. That's j-z-c-o-l-w-e-l-l at gmail.com. Big shout out to Ryan Hurdle and Tony Nelson for subscribing to my Patreon. You too can subscribe to me by going to patreon.com slash jamminjohn. I have free packages on there ranging from free to $7. Not a whole lot of money. I would really appreciate it if you supported me a little bit financially. Once again, that's patreon.com slash John. This is Jammin' John saying thanks, goodbye, and I'll see you tomorrow.